Hi, everybody. Welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Tommy, and today I'm joined by Angel. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> today we are officially starting Chapter 2 of Poor Charles' Fate, which is titled Deception. Deception. <laughs> for those... For those who need like a timeline, it's weeks uh, five and six of the Fate arc, which was January 2nd to January 12th, 2001. So now we're officially in 2001 as well. Um, getting closer to Tainted Love. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's getting so close. We got one book before that. Right. Um, so let's get into it. So we get a very long replay of Eve getting hit by the car. Like we literally saw everything from her talking to Ian to walking up to the door to looking for the key. <laughs> um, but New Year, it was a Friday cliffhanger. This is what soaps do, or they used to do. Mm -hmm. um, Livy tells Chris that she's tired of defending her own actions to him regarding her relationship with Jack. Um, Chris leaves and pays someone to block Jack's calls and messages trying to get in touch with Livy. Mm, which that's a jerk move. Mm -hmm. There were many moments this week that I was just like, oh, yeah, no, I still don't like you. Because I was like, maybe yeah. I was just young and I didn't like him. I'm like, no, don't like him. <laughs> which is which is interesting because I was watching because uh, uh, somebody tweeted there was like a, something that happened in uh, on uh, General Hospital where Allison kiss one of the characters and I was watching around those episodes to see if she mentioned it. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. Um, so it's like, it was like a whole different timeline that she was on GH than she was on Poor Charles. This was earlier in 2000. So, hmm. uh, and I remember why I liked Chris because of his friendship with Eve. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> that's exactly why I liked Chris because I liked Chris and Eve together. I liked them a lot. So uh, this, this part, not so much. I'm, I'm starting to hate him. Um, Jack is waiting at the recovery room, the bar, not in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For Livy and tries to call her, but is blocked. Thank you, Chris. Um, Karen thanks Frank for trying to comfort her when she saw Joe and Gabby being affectionate at the party the, the week before. Mm-hmm. The woman that hit Eve runs to the scene and Ian uh, yells at her to get help. And I put, because when she first ran up, because she had the short hair, I didn't get a good look of her face. I was like, okay, Chelsea Brady, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but then when we saw her face, I was like, oh, she doesn't look like Chelsea. <laughs> Just a Kevin goes outside to see what the commotion is and sees Ian is alive and Eve is unconscious. Frank arrives on the scene and both men say they are coming with them to the hospital. Lucy comes outside looking for Kevin and finds out about the accident from the person that hit Eve. And Lucy stops her when the police arrive because she thinks that she should talk to the police. When Lucy goes to point out the driver, she's disappeared. Ooh, she's gone. <laughs> Ian fills Kevin in on what went on with Harris. And Kevin stays by Eve's bedside and says he's sorry, just as Lucy walks up to the door and sees him with Eve. Oh. Oh, because prior to that point, she knew about the accident, but she didn't know. Yeah, who she didn't know it was Ian and Eve. Her kind of like. Even though she knew, she knew that they were alive, but you know, mm -hmm. she thought they were, they ran off together. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> it said, I said, Karen and Frank discuss Eve's condition and they're waiting on the CAT scan results. They say they barely had time to accept that she was alive and now she might die. Oh. <laughs> and then another thing, I like Karen's friendship with Eve. I know. They don't really, they don't really emphasize it. They didn't really emphasize it before, but they do now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when something else happens with Eve, they really emphasize Karen's friendship with Eve. I like that a lot. 
Were they rivals in the beginning? Um, I don't think so. But also, I have like I don't think they really communicated a lot. And I think as they went through the internship program, mm -hmm. they got closer. Okay. And I think it has a lot to do with so. I think you're aware of Karen's past, right? Yeah. On the show when she was played by Carrie Shane. Mm -hmm. So I think because of that, that I'm thinking, that's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure if that's true, but um, I'm thinking because Eve was a prostitute and Karen was a stripper, they mm -hmm. probably connected with that, with that trauma in their lives. Probably. Um, At least that's what a good writer would do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> play those beats. <laughs> play, those, play those beats, yeah. <laughs> The driver that hit Eve shows up at the hospital, questioning if she survives. Um, and she's like wearing like a hood and cloak, and it reminded me of when Chloe was on Days of Our Lives was dead, and oh, she had girl. and she had the scar on her face, and she was like hiding, and she had like the cloak on. Oh no, I was thinking of Gold Girl when she had the hood on and she had the, the reveal. Yeah, well, similar, but I yeah it was in the hospital. It reminded me of when she had Brady thinking she was dead, and she was like she was like sneaking around town in her cloak. <laughs> 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 um, Kevin explains to Lucy about Eve's accident. He feels guilty that they were making love and didn't answer the door. He doesn't understand how the DNA results were so wrong. Now, prior to him saying this, I was like, oh, I guess it doesn't matter that the DNA was switched. I'm like, because she's alive. But then, like, they doubled down on the DNA results. Yeah, they did. They doubled down on it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess it is a thing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Kevin explains what Harris did to Ian and Eve. She is stunned that they weren't running away together like she thought. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll get uh, to that, my reaction to that later. <laughs> I put Frank and Karen keep having like these mini moments. They kept having like these short scenes with Karen and mm -hmm. Frank like, bonding, being flirty. Yeah, which kind of maybe go into the next book a little bit. We'll see. Did <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frank is describing what he remembers the driver looking like to Garcia, and every time I see him, I'm like, oh, hey, Paul Mendes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's not him. I Because um, I looked the actor up, I was like, oh, it's is it Paul Mendes? But I think it might be him, or, or maybe his IMDB or uh, Wikipedia is wrong, but like, it doesn't show that it's him. It's definitely him. It's definitely him? Okay, it's I'm going to... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like the actress, the, the Gabby and the actress that I thought was her on Titans. No, this is definitely him. <laughs> Speaking of which, so we get to the part where Frank mentioned Courtney yet? Um, I think that's in a few more episodes because I did take okay. a note on that. <laughs> okay, yeah, just remind me when we get to there. I gotta I gotta say something about that. Um Kevin goes back to Eve's side and finds Ian there, asking her to come back to him. It was it was weird because they would have these moments where Ian would say something implying, like, hinting at their relationship that nobody really knows about yet. But mm -hmm. and Kevin would like walk up, but he wouldn't hear that part. <laughs> just, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> um, oh, Eve, the love we share. What? What are you doing in my wife's room? <laughs> yeah. The CAT scan results show a hairline fracture, but no bleeds, so it looks like she's going to be okay. She just needs to regain consciousness. Uh, Frank catches the driver trying to leave the hospital, and Garcia arrests her. Eve is moved to ICU, and Kevin tries to make Ian leave, but he says he's her doctor and friend, so he's not going anywhere. Aww. Eve regains consciousness and makes suspicious eye contact with Ian as Lucy watches from the window. Uh-oh. <laughs> Allison and Jamal are freezing in their apartment. He turns on a space heater that blows a fuse in the entire apartment. So now they're that in the dark. That scared <laughs> me. <laughs> with, all the, with all like the white fire and stuff like that. Like, good job to like whoever made that look real. Made it look real without it catching the set on fire. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when he said, I have a space heater, I was like, oh, okay. Those are dangerous. But I, but I was like, this yeah. show's not going to do anything with that. And then they did. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, where am I? Oh, Eve is awake and says Kevin and Ian's names. Kevin thinks Eve seeing Ian will upset her given everything they went through. Kevin demands to be alone with her and Allison can't live without electricity and says she's not a camper. I laughed when she said, <laughs> she's like, I'm not a camper. <laughs> she's like, I need my cappuccino and I need the. <laughs> she's so like used to like high society that when the cut when she lives with the 99%, she's like, I'm not dealing with this. Look, I love you, Jamal, but I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> She suggests getting a hotel room, and she offers to use her tip money to do that. Um, Jamal tries to fight it, but he gives in. When they're getting ready to leave, a drunk guy thinks Allison is a hooker because he sees um, Jamal counting the money to make sure that they have enough to afford a hotel room. <laughs> and when Jamal roughs him up oh, and tells him to get out of here, the guy says he'll be back or you'll regret this or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that, which as somebody who's African American, I'm s i am do see the issue with like interracial dating. Um I mm -hmm. have dated people outside of my race before. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm gonna let this episode I'm gonna let the storyline play a little bit more because I think this will be their main conflict this month. Um mm -hmm. or this arc. Well, this chapter, this yeah, this chapter. Mm -hmm. So before I give like a, an opinion, because like right now, right now it's like, uh, do I trust these writers writing it, writing about in uh interracial dating, the issues of interracial dating? Do I trust yeah. these writers? Because mm -hmm. uh, I think all of them are white, from what I remember seeing yeah. their names in the in the opening credit in the closing credits. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let let's let's just let this play out because automatically I was just like, hmm. When it comes to issues with people of color, um, you know, I tend to not trust it. When it comes, I tend to not trust it. So, mm -hmm. uh, with white writers, so. Yeah, I was wondering yeah. how this was going to play out, given that this was twenty-two years ago, yeah. and Allison's very much like, I don't see a problem. Like, it's not as bad as you think it is, and he's just like, "Welcome to the real world." Like, yes, it is, <laughs> and yeah, she's just like, "No," oh. like she doesn't get the POC struggle. <laughs> and then also she also she's very young. She's like she just turned 18. Um, right. that's true. And uh you know in, in the you know in the timeline of the show she just turned 18. So um so she she's a sheltered young mm -hmm. privileged white woman who doesn't understand mm -hmm. <laughs> um I put Jamal has to explain to Allison how he thought the person Oh, he thought a person like her would never be with a person like him. So that was kind of them glossing over like a white girl wouldn't be with a black guy without flat out saying Unless there was a a pimp hooker relationship <laughs> that he implies on. Um, yeah. They hear a noise outside and the drunk man has returned and he's messing with Jamal's bike. Allison stops him from chasing after him because she says they can get a new bike or fix the bike, but they can't get a new him. She doesn't want him to get hurt. She doesn't want Which him to get that, hurt. I love that part. I love when she said that. Like, that proves that she loves him. Yeah. Uh, Kevin tells Lucy as wonderful as last night was, they can never be. Scott. I think he even dropped it was meant to be the tagline for the arc. I think I, I remember he dropped that. I think dropped here and there. And yeah, maybe. <laughs> fate, it was meant to be all that. Um, like, he, like, they dropped those, they dropped those little like taglines and hints and stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, Scott is the hit and run driver's court appointed attorney. Um, but this is prior to him even knowing who the victims were of the hit and run. Mm -hmm. um, again, he walked in with his you know facial hair, and I was like, I think I like Scott. I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, Joe walks in on Ian and Eve's bedside. Sorry. 
Joe walks in on Ian at Eve's bedside, kissing her hand. Lucy is desperate to hold on to Kevin. She begs him not to throw away what they have. Joe warns Ian that he needs to be more careful and that it could have been Kevin that walked in on, on him kissing his hand. Garcia explains to Scott that the driver is under suspicion of working for Harris and that the accident might have been intentional. Scott starts aggressively Which interrogating. I wonder, I wonder how they got that, how they came to that conclusion. Yeah. Knowing what we know about the woman. Mm -hmm. Which we don't know her name, by the way, at this point. <laughs> no, and I'm like, literally throughout my whole notes up until like the last episode we watched, when I heard Ian say Ariana, I'm like, or that's her name, right, Ariana? Yeah. I was I'm like, like how, well, but how did he know her name? Did they slip it in at some point and I missed it? <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I looked at it twice. I was like, no. I mean, the only way that I knew was because, first of all, I watched this when it aired in mm -hmm. 2000. Second, if you look at the closing credits, she's the first one that pops up when it has the cast, and it's like it's credited well, and show as Ariana. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I literally just have her like in my notes as the driver. So she's the way. driver. <laughs> so we're just gonna call her the driver until we get to that part. <laughs> <laughs> um Scott Scott starts aggressively interrogating the driver and Garcia pulls him away. He thinks that this might be a conflict of interest. Now, okay, yeah. so Eve, Eve and Scott are close. Are they their friends, or were they married? Was yeah, that, so yeah? I don't think they were married. In fact, I I think they at one point that they it was almost they were they were together. Mm -hmm. um, there was a trap like the first years of the show mostly focused on like the try the well the quad of Eve. Sorry, yeah, Eve, Scott. Lucy and Kevin, and they mm -hmm. kind of swapped around a lot. Um, we get to Eve and Kevin like 99 okay ish, I think 98, 99. Um, Lucy and Scott were together for most of the series. Oh no, Lucy and um, Scott got married because they wanted to gain custody of Christina. Okay, the baby who's missing, um, mm -hmm. who's like missing and well, and a miracle happens or something. And, uh, and, um, not to interrupt you, but one of the promos for Soapnet in the episodes we watched basically did like a quick recap from like the yes. pilot where we were. That at. was so good. I watched that twice. <laughs> they just hit like the main points of it to like where we're uh -huh. at. <laughs> that's where I got it from because I was like, oh, right, Christina. Sorry, right, all right, Christina was there. And that's how Lucy and Kevin got married. And then, no, sorry, Lucy and Scott got married, then even Kevin got married, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, it was like a, it's like, it was like, they kept swapping couples and stuff like that. There was a point where um, Lucy was jealous of Eve, and she um, siphoned gas from, and this is how I learned the word siphon, siphoned <laughs> gas from um, uh, Eve's yeah. car, uh -huh. and then the car, like, went into an accident. Serena was in the car, and she went blind. And then oh. that's what caused like the swap from Lucy and Scott to Eve and Scott because they got close. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they never got married. They were just really they just got close and maybe they may maybe have um, had sex a few times, but I they never really put them okay. together and got married and everything like that. It was like they want you to think that Lucy can be either with Kevin or scott because of their history so <laughs> gotcha um kevin says he can't deny his feelings for lucy but he can't turn off how he feels about eve because she's his wife um he can't guarantee how any of this is going to work out mm. uh Victor informs Kevin that they are closing in on who may have altered the DNA results as Lucy panics. She's just like in the background. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian tells Joe that even he love each other and Kevin should know that. And this is another moment where Kevin walks up and he's like, I should know what. <laughs> like, should he doesn't what? Have to hear. <laughs> uh, Joe tells Kevin Eve's latest condition and says Eve wants to see both of them. 
and we see we see them talking, but mm-hmm. we don't actually hear what's going on. And then Ian leaves the room and looks through the window. Um, and he realizes that Eve doesn't remember her feelings for him. She doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my ridge voice for him. It's the same. <laughs> yeah, it's much deeper when he's ridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also like a little a little thing that I like with uh, Ian and Joe. He calls him Joseph. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> like he called him Joe like maybe once or twice, but like um, he always calls him Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> right. <laughs> um yeah, it kind of reminds me of how Stefano used to Alexi Alexandra. Yeah. Or uh <laughs> Carly Katharina. Uh-huh. <laughs> um Jack confronts Chris about interfering with him trying to get in touch with Livy. Lucy wants to hire Scott as her attorney. And she forces him by giving him money. So they have a client. Uh, yeah, I like when he mentions <laughs> I love it when she's like, just like rambling. And she like, I also like, I know I've said this before. She's, she'll randomly be like, pal, pal. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Herring is really good at that. <laughs> um, she gives him money and confesses. She changed the DNA results. I like how before she said what it was, she was like, I may have done something like illegal. So I need you to like <laughs> be my attorney. <laughs> Eve is struggling with feeling that there's something important she can't remember. Joe tells Ian that there's a possibility Eve is blocking out her feelings because part of her doesn't want to remember. Mm. Chris offers to pay for Jack's lawyer in return for him leaving town. Jack questions him how much is uh, how much is it to break up with a girlfriend worth these days, and Chris says ten thousand dollars. <laughs> hey, look! If I was offered ten thousand dollars, well, uh-huh. I'm single, but <laughs> but to break up with a significant other, I would take it. <laughs> I know it's not a lot of money, but it's a lot of money to me. <laughs> That'll pay off a lot of bills. <laughs> yeah, it would. Uh, Jack tells him he used Livy to screw him over and he takes the money and Chris has the whole confession recorded. And this is when I was just like, oh no, I don't like you. You're Yeah. Just- <laughs> and, then, and I think Jack was being sarcastic. He was, but like But it doesn't So yeah. I don't I don't know how he's gonna be able to use this recording unless he edits it. Because it would have also recorded him offering him the money to leave town, which yeah. is not good. So unless he better have some good editing software or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I just feel I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't I wasn't <laughs> feeling that part either. Uh Livy comes to check on Kevin and says now that Eve is back, she's worried about Lucy. Lucy, I like so when Lucy was confessing, she was just like, I don't look good in prison blue. You look good in prison blue. I don't look good in blue. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Livy comes back to the hotel towel room to find it filled with flowers, and Jack is there. She said that they must have costed him a fortune. And that she was worried when she didn't hear about him or any update on the parole officer. Um, and they kiss. It was very cute. No. Then was that, Chris- when, was that when he like lifted her up in her in her arms, or was that a little later? I don't remember. Because <laughs> <laughs> they do something really cute later when they when they when they leave. Um. Then Chris calls Garcia to report a theft of ten thousand dollars. I was like, "Oh, I really hate you." <laughs> oh no, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not feeling Chris this month. Um, Lucy tells Kevin that she did something terrible. Eve is asleep and remembering being with Ian and kissing him, and she wakes up and sees him by her side. Jamal is working on his bike inside the apartment. I thought that was strange. 
Yeah, that, I was like, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, how did he get it? Well, I know how he got it in because he probably went on and then and then ride it, ride it, but like kind of just peddled it a little bit in. But I don't know. Like, no, no, I, no. I, mean, I get, I get why he did it because like then there might be the fear that the that the drunk man might come back and destroy it some more. Yeah, I just thought it was weird that it was in the apartment. I've never seen anyone yeah. get a motorcycle inside their apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but also, side note, for people that don't have money, that's a pretty big apartment. There's nothing in it. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I also noted, I was like, are they in a twin size bed or like a full size bed? <laughs> <laughs> the bed looked a little small for two people. <laughs> well, his... um. Oh god, I think his aunt or his cousin uh was a character on GH. She wasn't a major character. Uh her name was Dara Jensen. Um she was like a lawyer, uh or a DA, I think. Either a DA or a lawyer. But mm -hmm. um they established early on that he's related to her. But I think oh, he kind of goes his own way after that and they barely connect. And I think the actress who played her left the show after that whole after you know after that connection left gh oh. i mean so oh that's cool i didn't i never knew he had any connection to the mother yeah so they tried to connect um just like allison is a barrington which is which um that was uh who lila was hanging out with with her uh grandma mm -hmm. um they try to connect like most of the people either with gh people most of the teens with either yeah. gh people or with poor charles people hence oh. Jack and Chris and Livy with Rachel Kevin. and Kevin. So yeah. they try to just connect those. So that way it's a more of an organic um, teen scene that these people are together because they're they're connected with people in Port Charles. That's cool. Oh, I like that. I didn't know that he was connected. Yeah. Um, he's still angry that the drunk man thought Allison was a hooker and that he was her pimp. She tells him she doesn't care what other people think and that that's their problem not and he says no it's their problem <laughs> um eve says she remembers part of christmas eve but it feels like a dream ian says it was all real what they felt and what they said he pleads with her to remember jack and livy show up at allison's and jamal's to celebrate jack clearing up his probation issues but Allison doesn't think it's a good time. <laughs> that's the part I want to talk about when, when, when uh, Libby and Jack came in. Libby was on Jack's back, and they were, and she they walked in, they walked in with Libby on her back. He walked in with Libby on her back. It was so adorable. They oh, did I see that? I don't know. Maybe I was taking notes and I looked down. Yeah, and... <laughs> it was. It was. So, I had to rewind it a few times. It was so adorable, and he. He um, walked her all the way up to, to the bike, and then that's when he dropped her. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was, and yes, there was, he did lift her up. And uh, you know how, like, you when, when you get married and they, you, lift, yeah. you lift them up to the threshold, he did that too. So, uh -huh. <laughs> when they were in the apartment, so she's probably very easy, she's very tiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Kelly Monaco's also from the Philly area. So, <laughs> oh, is she? Oh, cool. Yep. <laughs> um, after expressing their feelings for each other Lucy chickens out on telling Kevin what she did um, and Garcia shows up and arrests Jack for the, the money that Chris reported missing Garcia was very busy this week yes <laughs> um, Eve is talking through her dreams slash memories with Gail and Gail tells Ian to give Eve some space to work out her feelings and thoughts on her own. Lucy starts to run away and bumps into somebody that's like, what's your problem, lady? Like, watch where you're going. And she's like, she has like this, you know, rambling woman. Like, I'm always running away. No, I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm like, I'm running. Goes, Wait, I'm running. <laughs> Wait. She like, the guy's reaction was priceless, too. He was like, okay, crazy. <laughs> Um, she comes back to Kevin and she tells him she knew Ian and Eve were alive. Mm. Uh, Garcia says he's arresting Jack for robbery in the amount of $10,000. Eve, 
Ian goes to see the hit and run driver. So again, I still have no, I don't know her name. No name. <laughs> he tells her Eve is alive and doing as well as can be expected. He says he told the police Eve ran out in front of the car. Her bail is posted and she says she saw Eve and hit her on purpose because now she doesn't want to be out and free. She wants, because apparently her life is in danger. Mm -hmm. Um. Lucy explains to Kevin how the whole situation snowballed, and Kevin is furious with her. Ian wants to know why the driver falsely confessed and who she's running from. Chris shows up at the police station, but he drops the charges against Jack because Livy is there. Oh. And this is when I thought about the tape, and I'm just like, that tape is useless at this point. Yeah, it is now. <laughs> um, unless like we said he edited, edits it somehow um, Chris accuses Jack of coming to poor Charles to hurt him and using Livy and Jack punches him so Garcia now has to take Jack away again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for assault <laughs> um, Allison and Jamal are having a little like sidebar and she thinks maybe Jack could have stolen the money. There's been little moments where I feel like Allison doesn't like Jack. <laughs> like she doesn't this is ironic him. given <laughs> given that they're married in real life. Well, at this point they weren't, but <laughs> <laughs> um and Jamal can't believe that she's saying that, so that that's creating like a little tension between them. Mm -hmm. Um the driver sneaks into Ian's apartment while he's passed out and she sleeps on the floor. Which, how that, would she know where he lived? I think, I'm guessing he, she followed him. Yeah, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that too. But like, how would she know where, where he lived? And um, I mean, God love this. I'm not, this was prop. you know, I'll mention this later when we get to, when it gets to, gets to this, but I'm not feeling the actress. <laughs> I don't really have an opinion yet because I keep thinking I, I recognize her from something else, but I didn't want to look it up. I just wanted to go with the like, show and not look something up. <laughs> um, so in the next episode, Ian finds the driver on the couch. Um, she hides when there's a knock at the door and it's Kevin who wants some answers about Eve. Eve talks to Karen about the images of kissing Ian she keeps seeing. She can't tell if it's real or a fantasy. So this is, uh, Gabby tells Eve that Courtney left town. Now this is like the Courtney mentioned. Yeah. And then uh, there was there was something with Frank, I think after that, so. Yeah, Frank and Karen talked about her also. Yeah. So um, I think I mentioned Courtney the last episode, but I also want to mention what Frank said, who was who she was going to work with, Donatella Stewart, who was played by Louise Sorrell so, <laughs> when she was on the show. Okay. So Donatella Stewart was just basically their version of uh, Donatella Versace. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'll have to find those episodes because I think she was really good in them. See, I don't know who Courtney is at all. Like, you explain well, I'm talking about Donatella Stewart. Yeah, but like I don't know, like, the act like I don't even know what the actress looks like, um, but you had explained a little bit last time about how she outed um, Joe's HIV status on mm -hmm. TV. Um, so I'm guessing she was kind of a villain. Yeah, she was a villain. Um, she basically used her son. So we saw Neil uh, in the Chris's episode. We didn't see Courtney. It was the boy that kept the little boy that kept talking, but we really didn't know yes. who he was. Okay, yeah. Um, that's he Frank, was recast. That's yeah, he was Frank. recast, Neil. That's Frank's son. Yeah, Frank's What's son. That? Yep. Okay. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm guessing, sure. given his age, he didn't know that he had a son, and she came to town with him. Yeah. Okay. And I think she was trying to say that it was Joe's son, but then it turned out to be Frank's son. Oh. So, because she was kind of, she really was there to be a foil for Karen and Joe. Okay. And then, um, and then she was like, "Oh, you know, you must, you know." And and Neil had actually had leukemia, 
Um, oh. So uh, she was basically using that to kind of be like, you know, hey, you know, you should you should care for your son because because he has leukemia, you know, and it, it, it's a whole thing. And she was on she was on it for maybe like a little over two years, and then okay, I'm guessing because she had really no room for the arcs, they kind of wrote her out verbally like that. Which is yeah. a shame because the actress, I really liked the actress who played Courtney. She was a good, like, vixen on the show. Did she ever, was she, like, a known soap star? Like, did she do any other soaps after? She was, you don't watch Young and the Restless, right? I do. Oh, yeah. so in the not, so she was, so when, not Victoria, wow. I mean, Victoria's the character. When, um, and I'm thinking of Drusilla for some reason, I don't know why. But, <laughs> <laughs> when, um, Heather Tom first left Young and the Restless in 97, she replaced um, Heather Tom for a good three to six months, and then Heather Tom came back. Oh, she was a temp. Really? She was, she was, well, she was supposed to be permanent, um, oh. but I'm guessing they were able to get Heather Tom back. I saw clips of her as Victoria. They recently surfaced on YouTube. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if they're still there because, you know, a lot of channels are being purged. Yeah. But she wasn't bad. She okay. wasn't had her time good, yeah. but she wasn't bad. I, I would say she I would rank her like maybe above Amelia Amelia Heinley, but uh mm -hmm. even though I like Amelia Heinley as uh Victoria, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think she she was trying to keep that same energy as Heather okay. Tom, but um of course you can't yeah. you can't be Heather Tom. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. I always thought Heather was on like straight through till she left and Amelia came. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, because I, I had heard that. I, I had thought that too. And then I was there like, no, no, actually there was a little bit of a break with uh in like 97 and then where she was gone and then I'm I'm guessing it was a contract dispute. I don't know. But um she came uh Sarah Aldrich is her name and she came in and um played uh, Victoria and then Heather Tom came back maybe three to six months later. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I never would have seen Courtney because I've only watched maybe the first month of Poor Charles, like from the mm -hmm. movie on. And then I started watching myself, um, Taints of Love. So I wouldn't have seen Courtney. <laughs> yeah, she would have yeah, appeared between that. Like, um, There was like a whole thing where Frank had an adopted daughter who was played by a girl from was it Kids Incorporated, I think. I forgot. Really? I forgot the name of the show. <laughs> yeah. I love really you. Their kids. <laughs> they came from there. Oh wow. Um um with who though? Who did he have an adopted daughter with? So he I I'm guessing she she was just a runaway and then she adopted her and then they kind of wrote her out at this point. Okay. They don't even mention her. <laughs> they don't mention her anymore. Nope. Damn. <laughs> but she was like older. They tried to do a teen scene but then they kind of like it kind of faltered and hmm. all right uh karen and, Ke and karen and kevin karen and frank continue to flirt they have a ketchup and mustard fight in the recovery <laughs> room the bar not the hospital, the bar, not the hospital. <laughs> i always feel like i have to say that because it sounds like i'm talking about the hospital <laughs> um you all have that problem with their with the name change <laughs> <laughs> They Which share I think a, is the funniest thing ever. They share a lingering stare as if they're gonna kiss, but they don't. Um, the driver is like obsessed asking Ian about Eve and like the details of their relationship and how she's married. Um she begs Ian to let her stay, and he comforts her just as Eve walks down and sees him holding her. Does she have a key to his apartment? Oh, so we went on this whole Courtney tangent. I didn't even say what Gabby said. Gabby, oh. so Gabby said Courtney left town, but she also tells him that Joe told her that Ian said he's in love with somebody. Oh. And now Eve walking down and seeing him, seeing him with the driver, because we don't mm -hmm. know her name. Um, she thinks that this is the woman <laughs> that he loves. <laughs> <laughs> But how did Eve get into his apartment? Does she have a key? Yeah, like, did he not lock the door? I mean, did he not well, lock also, the door? 
Kevin walked in too, so he must not lock his door. So she didn't have to climb through the window. She could have just walked in. Yeah, she could have just walked through the door, went down the steps. <laughs> she should have checked the front door. What first. is this, Canada? I mean, okay, no offense, Canada, but you need to lock your doors. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin comes home looking for Eve, who checked out of the hospital without telling him. Mm. And Lucy comes to see him to apologize, reconcile, talk through how they feel for each other. Um, Eve tries to run off, run off when she sees Ian and the driver embracing, and she drops her things, which Ian hears. He tries to get her to stay, but she thanks him for everything he did, and she leaves. She says that that's why she stopped by, just to thank him. The driver won't go into details about who she is running from. He demands to know who wants her dead, and she says her family. So now I'm like, is this like a mob thing that's going on? I know what it is. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. I can <laughs> just, I'll just say that I don't think that what she reveals has been done before in daytime at this point. Okay. So uh, there, that's the clue. It's funny because we've been saying as we've been watching this, how things are happening so fast, so fast. And this is the one thing that I'm like, can this move faster? I need to know yeah. more. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know her name. <laughs> like, can I just get a name? I don't know her name. I just want to know what's going on. I mean, I know, but I just want to know. <laughs> um, Eve stops at Karen's to tell her she found Ian with the woman, and she thinks that this is the woman that he loves. Lucy tells Kevin she has to change her ways and she never learns from her mistakes. And this kind of softens Kevin. He says, well, that's progress. <laughs> <laughs> so then she's like, progress, progress. And she like harps on the progress. <laughs> and then I also unintentionally laugh when Lucy told Kevin um, that, you know, that she changed the DNA test. And he was like, are you <laughs> out of your mind? <laughs> Okay, so I don't, I didn't really pay attention to this or notice it when they actually showed her doing it. Because remember, I, I didn't realize like, she hit a button. I didn't realize she highlighted the knot and mm -hmm. did it. But when they showed the flashbacks of it, I was like, that looks like Microsoft Word. <laughs> like, yes, it, it, was. Like it was. It was either Word, it was either WordPad or Microsoft or old version of Microsoft Word. <laughs> I was like, that's not like an official like medical system i'm like that's, no, it that's a word <laughs> they could have sent that on a pdf pdfs were out back then right because i was looking at like the stuff like the buttons above that you yes. could press i'm like i know those buttons <laughs> somebody didn't know how to do a pdf i mean i think pdfs were harder to convert from word documents at the time but it was still doable it was still right. doable <laughs> in a professional setting like you know i can use microsoft right <laughs> It's like, they, it's like the poor Charles, the PCPD uh, sent uh, GH, like a an attachment, a word attachment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so Lucy says she needs to be a part of his life and they can take baby steps, but please don't cut her out. Eve thinks if she spends more time with Kevin and spends less time with Ian that she'll be able to shake this feeling that she has. Um, and now I finally wrote Ariana, so I must have heard Ian say her name. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, he did say it at this point, yep. Ariana keeps asking Ian about Eve. That was annoying, honestly. She just kept harping on it. Yeah, because you would, you would think... I think maybe... They want the viewers to think that she was working with Harris, which she isn't. Uh, we already established that, but like, because like it seems like she's more interested in Eve for some reason. Mm -hmm. And you would think if she was working with Harris, Harris was kind of obsessed with Eve a little bit. So that's so he probably like hyped her up and said like, oh hey, you know this is you know this woman is awesome. She used to be a prostitute. She's easy. That sort of thing. So. Um, you, you would think that Harris had hyped her up, but that's not what happens happening. So I don't know what her, her issue was with Eve. You're making me more, more intrigued with your description on the show is actually making me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, come on, give me information. <laughs> um, 
Ian tells her she needs to get some rest. And before he leaves, she shows him a picture of her brother so that if he sees him around town, he'll be aware. And then we see Ariana's brother at the recovery room talking to Karen. And he has a picture of her and asks her if she's seen her. her. And Karen says no. Um, which I'm trying to think. I don't think they actually did cross paths, so that's not a lie. Uh, Kevin tells Lucy he can't. Oh, Kevin tells Lucy he can't love her the way that she wants him to because Eve is back and they kiss. And Ian finds Eve outside Kevin's house. Is that where they were? So yeah. it was like Eve was about to walk in on that, but then Ian. Mm -hmm was walking up and yeah that's, that's how it ended Hold so on, that, wasn't as, as, that wasn't as big of a cliffhanger but still a cliffhanger. yeah it was like a little mini cliffhanger mm -hmm. i feel like weekly um i feel like daily episodes some daily episodes had bigger cliffhangers than that right um, but i, I guess because <clears throat> at this point it's the middle of the, the chapter so they really are yeah. just on the groundwork um, do you think the next two weeks will end this chapter? Because I know that they're 13 weeks, so one of these chapters has to have five weeks. Yeah, I'm trying to, I guess I, I guess if I look at the calendar <laughs> for 2000, <laughs> see how it is. I know it ends like March, early March. Yeah. yeah. It's probably like the tail end of February into early March. Yeah. Um, oh, and the guy who plays... Did you watch Passions by any chance? I did here and there. I watched it more in the beginning, and then I kind of stopped. Okay, so yeah, you probably won't know who... So, um, to all you viewers, uh, because this was my favorite storyline on Passions, I'm being entirely sarcastic. The guy <laughs> who plays Ariana's brother, who I think that's... I think it was the guy talking to Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, he was Spike on Passions. Oh, I know who Spike My is. Favorite storyline ever because I really hated that storyline because that's when he married Jessica, got her into sex work, and wasn't uh, Jessica a lesbian? No, 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 that was Simone. That was Simone. Oh, Simone was a lesbian. Okay. Yeah, Jessica was the one. Jessica was Kay's um, sister. School sister. Um, at that point, she was played by an actress who I didn't like in the role because I, I played like the, the one that played Matthew. Actress. She's the yes. one that played Maxie for six months. Yes, <laughs> the one that played Maxie for six months. Yep. Yeah. I remember that. I was like, "Oh, they got her, really?" Oh, <laughs> like what? And I only knew her because I was never a, like a GH um, regular GH watcher. But back then, I think Brenda had just came back, so that's how I was exposed to her playing Maxie because yeah. she, like the tail end of her run was there, and then they went uh, back to Robin Richards. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so that's why I was I was I was like I, I was like I remember seeing the character you know the, not uh, Ariana's brother from somewhere and I'm like oh that's Spike <laughs> <laughs> Spike uh, and then he buried Jessica alive in part three um, <laughs> James Riley's greatest hits <laughs> yeah because he buried Sheridan alive and then he buried um, Carly alive. In the uh, on days of our lives, mm -hmm. that man's mind was wild. <laughs> was wild. <laughs> but do you have anything else to add on what we watched this week? Um, I'm gonna go back and watch some Donatello Stewart episodes. I want to see Rory Sorrell in this show. <laughs> I love how you're skipping around. <laughs> yeah, it 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 kind of happens like. With certain things on the GH timeline, I'm like, oh, I remember this on Poor Charles. Like, they had a bunch of nurses' ball stuff, which we'll get into when we go to Tan Love. So, um, <laughs> uh, which that was that was probably my favorite nurses' ball on Poor Charles. And that was the last one, right? For like ten. That was years. the last one, yeah. Wow. So I think well, at that point, Jill Farron Phelps took over. But we're not going to talk about her. Nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, until next time, where can everybody find you on Twitter? You can find me on Twitter if you still use it. This 
you still use that tornado you song. Still loading. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you can find me loading on tornado song, but um, I'll figure out where to go. Uh, I, I know Instagram has is about to come out with threads, so <laughs> I might just stay on Instagram. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, it came out yesterday during like the whole thing, and then um, people were joking, "Take me the Instagram," and then everybody was running the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't there. <laughs> That'll be the new thing. Everybody will be tweeting. Here's my IG account. <laughs> Here's my IG account. <laughs> well, as always, you can find us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. And until next time, have a great night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>